Greetings everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a survey using Google Forms uh, complete with an informed consent. Uh, the survey that I'm going to create is just a recreation of the adult hope scale that I have listed here. You'll see that the adult hope scale has basically a um, scoring scale of 1 to 8. It's got a series of 12 questions that we're going to ask uh, and we're going to score it on 1 to 8. Uh, additionally, I'm going to show a few other types of questions that are relatively common and how to require the questions be answered as well as how to go to different things based on the response. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in uh, to a um, Google account. Once you're signed into a Google account, um, you can from even just google.com, you can use the little waffle board to get to either your Google Drive, which is where your form is saved, or go directly to forms itself. Uh, so I'm going to click on forms to go over to Google Forms directly, and I'm going to use the plus button to create a new form. Now there's two names for this. One is the name that it's going to appear in mine. So maybe this is for EDU um, 101 assignment three. That's just for me. Um, the title over here on the Google form is what the actual person who's taking the survey is going to see. So I'm gonna call this a sample adult hope scale. Now, the first thing I'm going to, to show you is how to delete a question. Whenever you're working in Google Forms, you have these little six dots that allow you to move the questions around. When you click on a question, it opens up the uh, editing features of that question. You'll notice the trash can down here. So I'm gonna delete question one right away because the first thing I'm going to have in my form is informed consent. So the way I'm going to do, to do that is really just add this title and description. So basically think of sections of your survey as being different pages. So the very first page is going to have my informed consent and it's going to have one question. Do you wish to participate? Now we're gonna come back to that a little bit later um, and I'm gonna show you how to program it. But that's the first page. So now I am going to use the bottom icon here, which is adding a section. And you're gonna notice that it adds the section wherever you happen to be underneath it. So I'm on this question right now. When I click section break, it adds a new section underneath here. I'm gonna call this um, the questions for right now. And I'm going to start adding some of the questions. Now, you could add these things a couple of different ways. I'm going to choose to use a Likert scale or a linear scale because it's going to record the questions as um, actual numbers for me to just add and tabulate afterwards. Uh, multiple choice questions could work as well, but I'm going to do one to eight. Um, and according to this scale, one was definitely false and eight was definitely true. And the first question here is, I can think of many ways to get out of a jam. Now, the nice thing about this, and for future reference, I'm gonna put a one on here so that I know that this is question one. Um, the nice thing about this is once you create that question, I can duplicate it a couple times and have the same setup so I'm duplicating this, I don't know how many times I just did that, um, but because I have the questions over here, I am simply going to copy and paste the questions in here so that I have about six of them right away. All right, so I have six questions here. Um, the problem that I see is that the questions say definitely false, definitely true, but I would like to define what all of these eight scores are. Once again, I'm going to use the title and description. Um, the reason I'm using that is because it allows me to do this. Um, so here's my scoring scale, and in the description, I'm gonna say one equals definitely false, two equals mostly false, three equals somewhat false. Now notice how I'm able to put each of these on their own line. That is why I'm using this kind of setup for it. Um, it also 
allows me to kind of go in here and just paste the scoring scale, but to keep it a little bit tidier, I'm going to put each of these on their own line by pressing return in front of them. Now, I like that better. The problem with doing that on an individual question is that every question I can add using the three drop down menu button, I can add a description, but I cannot take this description and put them on their own line. So it's up to you. If you think that's going to be hard for people to read, I'd encourage you to use the, the, the text button like we did here to add a scoring scale. Now, here's the second problem. When I preview this, and I'll do that by using the little uh, eyeball up here, when I preview this, I see here's going to be my informed consent. Um, here's all of the questions on one page. Now, you'll see that as I scroll down the page, I start losing the scoring scale. You can decide um, if, it, if you would like to, to add a different page for every couple of questions. And I am going to do that. I'm going to say, here's questions one to three. All right, this is the section that I made earlier. I'm just renaming it. I'm gonna go after section three and I'm going to add a new section and call this um, questions four through six. You can name them whatever you want. It's helpful to, so that you will know and recognize what they are later. Sections can be moved as well. Questions we drag and drop and we can put them in a new one. Like for example, maybe I wanted this to be section questions one to four. I can just drag this up here into that section or put it down at the bottom. You can also delete sections again using the three dots there. Delete the section or merge it with above. If you delete the section, it's going to delete all the questions in it. Um, the other thing is that after each section, you're going to notice this continue. Um, where do you want to go? Continue to next section. So you can have them out of order if you wanted to. Um, and the final one is submit the form, which it will do automatically at the end of the last section. So that's going to get us to our informed consent. Now, my informed consent, typically I have a description of the survey. Um, I tell the individuals like what you need to tell them about uh, what kind of risks there are as far as the consent. The do you wish to participate is where this becomes important. I'm just going to add a yes and a no to this informed consent. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, require this question. You can do this with any question that you've asked by just clicking on this required button. So I'm going to require this question, and then I am actually going to go to a section based on the answer. If you say yes, you are going to continue to section two, which is the first three questions. If you say no, I'm going to send you to a declined to participate section. I don't have it created yet. In fact, I'm going to create it right here. Just making a section that says you have declined to participate in the survey. Thank you for your time. You may close the browser or click submit below. Now that's going to seem kind of weird because it's like, well, they didn't submit anything. Um, the reason for this is after they're done with this section, I'm going to put submit form. They haven't answered anything other than no, I don't wish to participate. So when they submit the form, they're not submitting anything else. Um, some people will not even put that in there. They will just say that after this section, uh, if they click no, they are going to submit the form. So for example, um, this question up here, instead of continue, they're just going to submit form. I think sometimes um, that might be a little jarring for people, like I didn't actually do anything and it submitted already. So I, I put that section in decline participation. All right, so now let's see, let's talk about the order of these questions. Here's page one. Do you wish to participate? Yes, go to questions one to three. No, I'm going to go to the declined participation. After this section, it doesn't really matter what you do because they are going to go based on this. So this after section one is kind of pointless. After section two, submit the form. Um, these ones, they're just going to go to the next section until they get to the very bottom. 
automatically it will submit the form once they get to the bottom of this. Okay, so let's take a look at what this, how this acts when I walk through it. I'm going to click the eyeball and preview it. Do you wish to participate? No. Next. All right, you've declined. Close the browser or submit. If you do wish to participate, next, it takes you to the first three questions. Once you answer them, it'll take you to the next three questions. Once you answer them, you can submit it. Now, this is where on the very last page, I would advise putting one extra little text box here. So let's go back to the actual survey. After that last question, I usually add, not a section, let me delete that section. I usually add one more text box at the very end. Where did it put that? I mean, it put it way at the top for some reason. So I'm gonna drag that all the way down to the very end and say, um, survey submission. If you have decided not to participate, please close your browser window now. If you are still willing, then click the submit button below. That way they have one last chance to back out if they've decided I really don't want to answer these questions. It just lets them know. Um, so again, if I look at this, do you wish to participate? Yes. Answer the first page. The second page right here, it says if you've decided not to participate, please close your browser window below. Once again, you could do that on another section and just have that all by itself. Um, for example, if I wanted to add a section that says uh, survey submission or last chance to back out, whatever you would want to call it, um, when a person goes through here, they are going to say yes, answer questions, answer questions, and then it has the last chance for them to back out where they can close it or hit submit. So that is how to create the survey. Um, hopefully now you see how you can do an informed consent, how to go to different sections based on the answer of a question, or even just go from section to section like what to do after they finish each of these pages. Um, finally, how to take any question and make it required.